Hello there. How are you all doing? Hope everyone is safe and sound. And um, thanks a lot for joining us today on this somewhat sunny afternoon. Recently it was raining a lot here in Budapest and I mean a lot, but I hope you have a sunnier weather where you are. But our topic is bright enough to enlighten our day. As uh, you probably expect, we will talk about the latest release of Mobile NAV, the 7.0 version, with a special focus on the new Blockbuster feature, the RFID scanning. Uh, and to be honest, when the idea to develop uh, an RFID function to Mobile NAV popped up, I was a bit skeptic. But you, our partners, uh, through the excessive questionnaire we sent out earlier this year, convinced us to move forward with it. Um, in checking the questionnaire, we found that around half of the participants had at least uh, one lead in the past six months where having the RFID functions would be crucial, and most of them had more than one case. So by just looking at the statistics, it's highly likely to ca came across a client with some sort of uh, RFID needs uh, in the very near future. Uh, recently, we had the chance to test the new features with RFID capable devices uh, in a live scenario, and I must say I'm pretty impressed. And you will see some of the videos during the session of us preparing a test case, uh, but this will be Tibor's scene, uh, and I don't want to steal it. Uh, now, before we jump into the exciting part, I have to do the usual partner updates, uh, but I promise it will be as quick uh, as I can make it. So the first topic, uh, we are piloting a partner collaboration program uh, to, dedicate, to a dedicated few uh, partners at the moment, but we want to roll it out to all of you. Uh, the aim of the program is to provide you with marketing and sales support on a regular basis. Uh, the first wave is uh, two fully prepared end user webinars in the WMS and field service topics, and we will grant the marketing materials, newsletters, social activity templates that you can use to create your own content with. Uh, essentially, we want to help you and your marketing and sales activities by preparing these for you so you can spare your resources. Uh, if you are not contacted yet regarding this, but you find this program somewhat interesting, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us and I will bring you on board with all the necessary information. Uh, the program is, of course, free of charge. Uh, our second topic is licensing related. Uh, you probably learned from our newsletters that, uh, but I want to highlight it as well, that we are advising that the end users uh, through our partners to upgrade the mobile NAV application. Uh, as you might remember, for the very old versions of mobile NAV, the license key is included in, in a FOB file. Uh, we discontinued to generate this file, but uh, we uh, created a web page where you can uh, create yourself this FOB file from the TXT uh, that we still uh, give you. So please uh, consider to move your clients from the very old versions of mobile NAV to, to later ones, for example, to the 7.0 uh, version. Uh, a bit related to the second point with the new 7.0 version around the corner, uh, as currently mobile NAV works with a very wide range of uh, base systems, including different Dynamics and AV and Business Central versions. From this point, we stop supporting uh, Dynamics NAV 2009 versions. Uh, so the 7.0 won't be compatible uh, with it anymore, but the earlier versions will still run on uh, 2009. Uh, for example, uh, if your client uh, considers to upgrade from a very old uh, mobile NAV version to a later one, uh, they can still do it to the 6.0. Uh, we believe it is still a pretty impressive range of uh, supporting uh, Dynamics versions, though. Um, the fourth point is roadmap. Uh, please take a look at our roadmap on our website. It's partner.multisoft.hu. Uh, you can add your ideas and you can vote for other published ideas here. And basically, we are constantly trying to involve our partners and clients in the mobile AV development. Uh, the most relevant features that came from this uh, 
uh, roadmap feature uh, and comes from uh, the clients and from our partners uh, as it was in the past and it will be in the future. We tend to listen to you and I can't emphasize it enough how important this is uh, in, in the life of Mobile Navy. So please visit the roadmap and uh, share your ideas if you have one. Uh, the fifth point is a bit more practical. Uh, we stacked up our resources uh, as more and more partners are looking for help uh, from us with implementations and trainings uh, to help you de deliver the best uh, possible solution to your clients. We defined uh, two different approaches. Uh, we've created installation packages where we will take care of uh, of everything that your new or existing or upgrading clients might need with Mobile Navy, but we have also created a partner training um, package, let's say, beside the old fat hands-on lab document, which we will also update very soon. So our partners can stay up to date with Mobile Navy, and so you will be able to sell your services uh, with uh, our licenses as well. So we don't want to uh, take your uh, services by uh, doing all the installations, but uh, we can help you to stay up to date with Mobile Navy as well. So in the webinar follow up email and in our next newsletters, we will send you more information about these packages and soon these will be all available on our previously mentioned website as well. Last but not least, as we have uh, more and more products now. We've created a new general partner contract uh, that will take over the role of the old Mobile Navy partner agreement. In the upcoming few months, I will contact all of the partners one by one to discuss the details of the partnership options. So don't be surprised uh, if you will see me in your uh, inboxes. I'm most probably contacting you because of the new partner contract. So these were the most important uh, partner updates for today. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, holding out and now we can continue with the more interesting part. Uh, and so Tibor, if you are ready, the stage is yours. Thank you, Bertrand. So before we start uh, the introduction of the, the new 7.0 release. I just want to have a couple of words about the previous release, which was 6.0. Um, in the previous release, uh, we also uh, released very interesting feature, interesting features like uh, push notifications, uh, the map view on the list uh, list uh, pages. Uh, the mobile AV client can record the current GPS position if, uh, for example, uh, this, that would be needed for tracking the actual position of the user. You, we have into, uh, introduced a lot of uh, configurability features around the filtering. There we have uh, made the possibility to, to allow uh, predefined filtering, not from code, but uh, from the mobile AV user interface more preparing to the low code or no code environments and we have also introduced the ability to to manage the saved filters centrally so if you want to distribute filters uh, among the different users you can also do that and you can also save the, your app settings as a default for yourself and from there uh, you can also copy it over to other users as well so all of these features are really um, helping the first implementation or the rollout of mobile AV. And let's see the, uh, the new release, which is 7.0. Um, the most important feature here is RFID scanning. Uh, we have already uh, promised that, that uh, we are considering it and uh, we will uh, implement it sooner or later. So now we did it. Um, and we also have other features like uh, uh, delegated function buttons on the lists. Uh, we did something in the past, if you remember, which was called quick actions. In that case, the actions uh, could be basically promoted from the card page uh, uh, to, the, to the parent page. So every list item could, uh, could have uh, editable field. Um, uh, on quick editable fields on the on the list directly, and also you can press the function buttons of the list items directly on the list already. Um, but in this case now we are also allowing that to to uh, to delegate that from the parent card. So I will also show show examples for that. 
And for the old filter is also one step forward uh, the easy uh, implementation. In that case, we already have some own filters like a salesperson code, service sweeper, service uh, technician filter. Uh, and with this feature, you can enforce that uh, by default. So the user won't see anything but his own, uh, his uh, customers or his sales orders. And you don't need to code for that. Uh, we also further uh, improve the barcode scanning. Uh, there we have identified a couple of areas where, where mobile navy could uh, be improved. We also discuss this topic uh, later on. We are introducing a new offline self-diagnostics, which is not on an external tool. Uh, we already had a, a, a mobile navy diagnostics tool. Maybe some of you already know it, but uh, this is something which is built inside the add-on and uh, this uh, basically targeting the offline configuration the 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 wellness or the or the, the correctness of the offline configuration uh, of your system um, some other partners have already requested to to be able to import and export partial configuration now it will be available um, under construction uh, will be used for for temporarily disabling certain um, certain features in the configuration while you are uh, basically editing the configuration and uh, some minor improvements like configurable list display limit uh, or status monitoring timeout. So let's let's see the biggest topic, which is uh, RFID. Um, just to give you some background if some of you is not uh, that uh, that uh, know the RFID technology um, how the, the the technology works basically RFID technology is working with tags RFID tags um, an RFID tag can be active or passive we uh, most of the time uh, in the warehouses and in the fixed assets uh, uh, you work with uh, passive RFID tags because those are much cheaper than the active RFID tags um, and you normally either have a fixed uh, reader like a, a gate, RFID gate, or a mobile reader. Of course, mobile AV is designed for mobile devices, uh, tablets, or phones. So that's why we are shooting for the portable RFID reader, um, which is normally a mobile device extended with an RFID antenna. In such a case, basically the RFID reader antenna can uh, send uh, uh, a radio signal out and that will activate the passive RFID tag. So basically it will give some power to uh, to it and uh, with that uh, gained power, the passive RFID tag can, can send back the tag information to the device itself. So that's how RFID is uh, basically working. Given that uh, knowledge, uh, of course, this technology has some uh, uh, pros and also have some cons. Uh, the pros are that uh, compared to the barcode technology uh, is that the RFID technology is much faster. Uh, with, RFID, with an RFID reader, you can read up to 900 tags uh, per uh, second, which is quite impressive. And in this case, uh, given the radio signal technology, the light condition doesn't matter. So you don't need to see the tag uh, like with the barcode reader where you need a direct uh, vis visual contact to, to the tag itself. Um, the, the RFID tag can be hidden or, or packed inside the box, uh, so it don't even need to be uh, able to, uh, to be uh, visible as, as mentioned. And it can store not just the ID of the, 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 the tag, but it can also store extended uh, data uh, in the user memory. And uh, because of the technology, uh, there are less tag damages compared to the barcode. The barcode technology where there is a printed barcode and uh, if since that it should be visible, it should be outside of the box. And that's why when you are packed, uh, that the, 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 the tag itself can, can uh, damage. Uh, uh, for a barcode tag, but it also has some bones. Um, this technology depends on the radio signals, and some materials can block this, uh, like uh, like metals. So, um, so in that case, the the RFID technology is not that um, um, achievable. Um, the tags are a little bit more expensive, but not too much. Um, but this is true for the tags and the devices as well. So the RFID readers are also uh, somewhat uh, um, more expensive than the, the barcode readers. 
And uh, the last uh, but not least, the reading is not 100% correct, so to say. Uh, so when uh, when there is a tag which is missing, then then uh, you need to sw still switch to one by one uh, processing. So when you are scanning a, a full um, a pallet, for example, and uh, you know that it, there should be one or two uh, uh, items more, then you still need to count. But in most of the cases, if you if your scan is is uh, proper, then then uh, then this technology is much uh, faster than the barcode scanning. Here are some uh, uh, typical um, usage of the RFID uh, standard. Uh, the RFID has a standard uh, which is called EPC tag standard uh, that stands for electronic product um, um, code. Uh, and the typical uh, usages of the EPC tech standard are uh, the, the, the GTIN uh, or the SGTIN that is normally used for, for uh, trade items like normal items which you sell and purchase. Uh, but there are also other standards like uh, SSCC or, or GLN, etc., which are basically designed for logistical units or locations or fixed assets, etc. And let's see what we have done uh, in, in Mobile AV in 6.7.0. Uh, um, first of all, uh, the first and primary target for RFID uh, reading uh, was Android. Uh, because what we see uh, so far is that uh, in the warehouse there are more and more Android devices. Um, but basically the 90% of the code, the source code, what we have uh, implemented for RFID is common across the different platforms. Uh, you may remember that we have uh, switched to uh, Xamarin platform and now uh, a uh, very high uh, percentage of our code source code is common across the different versions like Android, iOS, uh, Windows uh, and Windows C. And this is also true for RFID. And we also made uh, the user interfaces or the, the, the platform dependent parts 99% ready for iOS, Windows 10 and Windows CE. And uh, basically we have something like one percentage um, missing part uh, from those platforms. So basically, uh, iOS, Windows 10, and Windows C could also be support RFID uh, if you send a device to us, which is uh, running on iOS or, or Windows 10 or Windows C, then we are happy to do the, the, the missing one, uh, one percentage. Uh, and then that device can also support RFID with mobile AV. We have integrated two uh, main vendors uh, at the moment, which is Zebra and uh, Datalogic. Um, but this is also true for the, the, the different vendors. If you send a different uh, vendor, which is not yet supported uh, out of the box, then we can also do the, the integration uh, part of that vendor and uh, that will also be uh, mobile and AV um, um, verified. In mobile AV, we uh, read uh, these EPC tags. Uh, there are 22 different standards, and out of that, 19 uh, um, standards we do support. Um, and basically, how the the mobile AV integration works is that we will transform the EPC tag ID uh, into a GS uh, GS1 uh, string. Uh, I hope. Many of you know what GS1 stands for. Uh, basically, that, 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 that's a comp, uh, composite barcode uh, standard where you can uh, encode multiple information within one, one string. And uh, we designed this RFID reading to be fully configurable as, uh, as Mobile is also uh, um, built on the very same concept. And uh, and one important note regarding the RFID technology is that we will uh, ask for a separate license. Uh, so if you want to use RFID on an RFID scanner together with Mobile AV, you, need, you will need a separate Mobile, uh, mobile AV RFID license. And that's also going to be a device-based license, which you need to buy uh, on the top of the Mobile AV license itself. Okay, so let's see a couple of uh, scenarios what we have uh, collected. Um, the most easiest or simplest uh, RFID scenario is when you need to enter data. So uh, let's say truck 
arrived and uh, there is uh, uh, many um, boxes around uh, with uh, different uh, RFID tags and you need to enter the serial number uh, into the into the uh, BZ Central or NAV database. The next scenario, uh, which is uh, also quite trivial, is the data validation. So when, when uh, it, if, if it's already turned out that you have uh, you are shipping the a, a certain serial number, then uh, during the shipment you want to verify quickly that the whole palette, which can consist of uh, many hundreds of items, are containing the, the proper serial numbers and you don't want to scan one by one uh, them, uh, but just use an RFID reader and uh, read them all, all in at once. We have also created a scenario which is uh, somehow a mixture of the, two, uh, the first two, which is basically data entry plus, uh, plus validation. In this case, uh, we need to enter the RFID, uh, uh, the, the serial number information from the RFID, but we are also uh, uh, validating the item number information of the RFID tag itself. So basically, in that case, um, you also validate the data, the, the, the red RFID data, and you also enter certain parts of that into the system. Uh, this uh, can be a good example, for example, if you want to uh, to uh, register a warehouse pick when you where you have not yet decided which serial number do you want to take. And in that case, you take one serial number from the shelf and collect that, them into a separate pallet. And in that case, you will scan uh, the, 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 the uh, uh, different uh, items and you want to register uh, which serial numbers has been taken. Uh, basically, and then you can register the, the warehouse pick. And in that case, you know what is the item because you want to, for example, uh, register a 19 inch monitor, which is a serial tracked item, but you don't uh, uh, decide the serial number yet. The fourth scenario is the single read. Uh, we also wanted to implement this because uh, in some cases it might be useful to use the RFID reader as a barcode reader. In that case, the strongest tag uh, detected will be used as, as the scanned barcode basically. And uh, you can use the system, the mobile navy system like, like you have used for barcode reading. Um, and uh, everything will be the same because basically, uh, given to the to the fact that we are uh, converting the the RFID text into GS1 barcodes, basically, you can process those just like with the mobile navy previously. The fifth scenario is the tag recon, uh, which is basically uh, with that feature you can just uh, uh, check uh, and search for the the RFID text nearby. And we also have a locate tag uh, feature. Uh, in that case, uh, you can point a certain RF, uh, RFID tag and you can uh, try to search it uh, in, the, in the warehouse. How the mobile uh, RFID configuration looks like. So basically, as I promised, it will be fully configurable. Uh, so uh, nothing will be hard coded here, uh, but we uh, have basically introduced a couple of special mobile types. Mobile types is already well, well uh, known in the mobile navy configuration. So we have introduced a couple of RFID related mobile uh, mobile types like RFID, which will identify the different uh, uh, fields which used for identification. Uh, the RFID RSSC will uh, show the signal strength, uh, which can be minus uh, 100 to 0. Uh, RFID status will be an option, uh, whether the tag is expected, found or new. The RFID hexa will contain the original tag ID in hexa representation. The RFID GS1 uh, will show the converted GS1 format of the tag ID. With RFID finish uh, mobile tab, you can uh, see, uh, basically flag a certain method which uh, should be invoked once the user is finished has finished the, the, the RFID scanning, and that is a, that is a configurable function uh, which can then uh, uh, do the do, do the uh, business logic part uh, together with the scanned tags. Um, device ID uh, is already uh, used. Um, we also use that for the RFID reading because uh, on the page we are basically um, um, separating the different users with device ID and user ID. So these are the mobile types which basically uh, drive the configuration. And uh, 
yeah, as I said, the GS1 string uh, will be processed um, uh, with the reg regular expression feature, which, also, which is also a well-known feature of Mobile Navy. And with the reg regular expressions, uh, we can split the GS1 barcode into separate parts like uh, item cross uh, reference number, uh, serial number, etc. And the configurable, configurable functions are available for generating the expected tag list uh, and also uh, can be used for, for uh, invoking the uh, fi uh, finalization uh, logic. A couple of uh, user interface uh, pictures. Uh, um, on the first one, you can see an expected list of uh, of uh, of the RFID items. At that moment, uh, we only know that we have uh, men's citizen Navy Hawk uh, uh, clocks, uh, which needs to be scanned. Each of them have different uh, serial number, and we have, uh, for example, 95 out of them. Then you start start the scanning. Where, where we will show uh, uh, a progress bar uh, and that progress bar will show you how many of them have been found already and how many uh, how many unique tags have you scanned so far and at the end of the reading uh, you can see the third uh, uh, screenshot uh, we will so show you a, a result list where we uh, show you the 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 signal strength uh, with a nice progress bar or, or yeah, an SSI bar. Um, and we have also filled out the serial numbers, as you can see, and the, the status uh, turned from expected to found. And the last one is the user interface for the locate tag, uh, but you will also see this during the, the video. And these uh, user interfaces are from the setting, uh, uh, the setup of the, of the RFID feature. Basically, we have uh, separated the uh, the barcode scanning from the general tab. So now we have a separate scanning tab uh, in Mobile NAV where you have the barcode scanner uh, settings, the NFC, and now the RFID part as well. And uh, as you can see, you can choose from Zebra or Data Logic. Um, and we also have a test page where you can uh, test your test your uh, scanner. And this is how the, the, the RFID reading process looks like. So the user will open up this RFID reading uh, list page. Um, and that uh, point, the mobile navy will clear the, clear the RFID results from a previous uh, 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 reading session, for example. And then you have, the, you have, you have an optional uh, method which uh, can be invoked, uh, which can generate the expected records. Uh, then the user will uh, will be presented with the with the reading list with optional expected records, and then he can press the RFID trigger. As I said, uh, during the reading process, there there is there will be a progress bar, and when the user releases the trigger, then uh, we will update the list. Uh, we will show the, the the process tags and the updated status. And finally, the user will check the result list, maybe adjust uh, the RSSI, RSSI filter, because you can also play around with that RSSI uh, filter, which is uh, which tag is nearby, which is uh, a bit uh, far from you, so that those uh, are not relevant, etc. And finally, you can press the finish action, which will invoke a configurable uh, function again to do the business logic with the, with the RFID uh, result. Um, and this page is about the uh, the expected found matching process. Uh, basically, we, we identify two uh, two different uh, matching process to the expected tags. We have a full match where all mobile type RFID fields should be uh, matching. So in that case, you you know, for example, the item number and the serial number as well, and both uh, are used for for validating the the, the outgoing uh, shipment, for example. And we also have a partial match, uh, and, and then in that case, at least one uh, mobile type RFID field should match. And uh, in that case, the strongest RSS, RSSI uh, tag will win, which matches with the with the with the mobile type RFID uh, uh, field. Okay, and in this video. Uh, you basically uh, can see that we are basically preparing a purchase order um, and we will order uh, this man's citizen uh, Navy Hawk uh, uh, clocks, uh, 95 uh, of them. 
and this uh, clock uh, is a serial tracked item and now after the purchase order the, the the truck has arrived into the warehouse so that's that's uh, the preparation of the story and uh, let's see the the next video the the user will uh, go to the warehouse receipts and uh, we'll press this RFID scan button. At this moment, uh, uh, the system can generate the expected tags, which in this case will be 95 Man Citizen Navy Hawk uh, lines, which doesn't have a serial number yet because uh, we are entering that uh, information into the system. So as uh, you can see, uh, this uh, nice guy uh, with me uh, is uh, using the RFID scanner uh, to scan the RFID tags. And, uh, and after that, he, I'm, I'm releasing the button and now the system will uh, uh, finish the processing. After the, the finished processing, uh, you will see that the, the, the expected status will change to found and also the RSSI, RSSI values are, are filled. And at the end, uh, basically I have pressed the finish button, which basically um, um, registered the, the serial numbers into the warehouse received. And on this video, you can also see that these uh, uh, serial numbers has been uh, registered uh, to the um, to the uh, warehouse receipt, and now the warehouse receipt can be can be uh, registered or posted uh, from an AV. Uh, the next video is about the outgoing part. In this case, we will prepare uh, um, a sales order. Okay, I'll just try to okay, replay the video. So in this case, we will uh, create a sales order. Uh, same situation, uh, we'll uh, try to sell the same uh, clocks uh, from the white warehouse, 95 out of them, and we don't specify uh, which uh, clocks uh, need to be, uh, need to be um, uh, shipped. So now we will open up the warehouse picks, uh, in this case 95 uh, lines uh, with the pick, and again, by pressing the RFID scan button, the system will generate the expected list. But now, in this case, we will uh, we have hidden um, uh, a non non expected uh, tag into the into the pallet. So I will start the scanning again. And after the scanning, and the, uh, when all the unprocessed uh, tags will be processed, then you will see that uh, there will be one unexpected tag. So more than 95 uh, tags were found, and out of and one out of them is not uh, not expected. Uh, this will be visible when when I press the finish because the finish action will show an error, unexpected RFID tag found with the item number so the the operator can scroll down and check which was that in that case it was an oakley uh, sunglass and here i will use the the uh, tag locate feature which i start and in that case uh, basically i will receive something like a metal detector user interface uh, where, I can, where i can easily find the 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 unexpected tag in the um, in the palette so this this item should not be here. Uh, it has been uh, put uh, in here by mistake, so uh, the operator can easily uh, remove it from the pallet. So in this case, you can quite easily uh, use the RFI technology to to validate uh, and detect the the mistakes of the of the warehouse employees because in this case uh, there was an unexpected item. And, uh, and the system didn't uh, allow you to register or finish the RFID reading process. OK, I hope you enjoyed the RFID part. Now we can uh, talk about the, the smaller improvements, which are some of them are related to the RFID uh, reading. So uh, because of the RFID, we have uh, we have uh, implemented implemented uh, the, this uh, new feature, but I we think that these uh, new uh, features are also useful for other areas. First of all, these function buttons on the list. In this case, uh, now you can delegate uh, a function uh, to the to the drill down list. Um, I can also show you that in the in the configuration. So I will now switch to my demo environment, 
and um, and I'll also show you the interface uh, how that looks like. So basically, if I navigate to mobile administration, I will go to warehouse put away. So warehouse uh, put away. And the warehouse put away has a has a drill down to the lines. And if I edit the relation, now you will see a new action called dele delegated uh, parent actions. And if you click on that, then uh, we have a new user interface here where you can select uh, certain uh, function buttons. In this case, we have register, autofill, quantity handle, um, and there are five finish uh, uh, button on the parent. And now I will just simply delegate the autofill quantity to handle to the uh, to the warehouse put away head, uh, header to the to the put away lines basically. And uh, on the mobile client, uh, if I do a logout and login, then uh, then you will also see what we have done. Basically, what we expect now is that on the warehouse put away line list, you will have an auto field quantity handle uh, button. And uh, and then you can also press it, and it, it will it will work. Okay, so now warehouse putaways. I open up a putaway here. Uh, it has one line with bicycle, uh, one piece, and as you can see on the line list, I'm also having this auto fill quantity to handle button, which I can uh, I can press. And if I press it, then the the quantity to fill uh, to handle will be filled uh, with the maximum value. And this button is also available on the on the on the header card. But from the header card, you can either use the uh, the uh, already existing height field, or you can also hide it from the configuration. So in that case, you can also create a, a delegated uh, uh, action button on the list from the parent and on the parent that action is not available uh, or not, not visible basically. Okay. Next one, enforce all filter. Uh, that's also an interesting uh, feature. All filter uh, were uh, existing uh, already. Uh, now what we have introduced is that the ability to enforce that. So in that case, the, the user's salesperson code, for example, uh, will be used as a, as a, as a hard-coded uh, filter and you don't need to code for that. Uh, the mobile area configuration is already containing uh, 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 certain uh, places where, where own filters are used. For example, the customer list uh, is a good, good example. There, the salesperson code is uh, flagged uh, with the mobile type salesperson code uh, here. And uh, while just simply uh, changing the uh, the uh, uh, visible as filter to false on the salesperson code, uh, I can activate this uh, this uh, enforce all filter because uh, you may remember that we have introduced this visible as filter uh, in the previous releases. So now you can hide certain filters from the from the from the list. And in in this case, if you hide an uh, 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 own filter from the from the from the list page basically in that case you will activate the the enforced all filter so in that case the, it will be always filtered by the salesperson code okay okay uh, advanced barcode scanning it's also an interesting topic um, we have identified a couple of challenges that those are on the left side um, one challenge was to to uh, to be able to split the the barcode across multiple pages because you may remember that we we already had uh, regular expressions which can uh, split the the composite barcode into multiple parts, but it was not possible to to do that across different pages. What do I mean? Um, for example, if you have a, a GS1 barcode which contains the item cross-reference and not the item number directly, in that case, you need to uh, use the re regular expression on the item cross-reference page and on the source page as well, because you might also want to um, uh, split uh, and insert the serial number on the warehouse pick uh, uh, line itself. So in that case, you would it was not possible to do that directly in the base configuration because uh, because uh, the item cross reference need to be looked up 
or and then uh, used on a different uh, page and not on the warehouse uh, pick line directly. Uh, the next challenge uh, was the different uh, barcode behavior on list and card. Uh, sometimes you want to just use a certain um, a certain field for for filtering and not for for uh, entering the the data. So, for example, when you scan a barcode, you don't want to to have them entered. You, you want to only use it for filtering and vice versa. So uh, that was also a challenge. Um, from time to time, we had the, the, the question from the partners. Uh, it's uh, it's fine that we have staging and workflow, but why do uh, he need to scan uh, the item number once again uh, while he have just scanned that on the pick line list, for example? So when you when you are narrowing down the uh, pick line list uh, with barcode filtering and uh, automatically the card page is opening up, then, then why, uh, why the, the staging does not start with the already validated item number field. And the last one is the, the regular expressions in general. So if you use uh, re regular expressions because we have, you have composite barcodes, uh, then uh, you might need to insert that many times and many, many pages across the configuration. So now we have, uh, uh, we are also trying to solve this uh, this uh, uh, feature or problem uh, in in mobile navy and let's see the solutions what we've done um, uh, basically from now we are allowing uh, the uh, regex result zero which is basically the original barcode and given that uh, you can already have regular expression on the warehouse pick line directly and uh, with the with the result zero you can pass the original uh, gs1 barcode to the uh, to the lookup of the item and the item from uh, to the uh, item cross reference. So with that feature, you can basically use the regular expression feature across multiple uh, pages as well. The next one is the visible as filter and editable property. You can play around with them and uh, with that you can uh, achieve uh, different behavior on, on list and cards. From now on, we will replay the last barcode on the open card. So when you will open a card uh, with barcode scanning, uh, because you have uh, filtered the list and the last scan uh, has opened up a card page or automatically, in that case, we will replay that uh, last barcode on the card page as well. And the last but not, but not least, uh, we uh, have introduced the centralized reg regular expression uh, uh, administration. Uh, I would like to also show you that how that works in mobile and AV. So uh, basically we have introduced a new tile in the mobile and AV administrations uh, called uh, regular expressions. In this uh, configuration, I have already created one uh, regular expression, but I, I also show you how that uh, looks like. Um, basically, you can give it a name, a code and a description that's, that's normal so far. And here you can basically uh, define your regular expression uh, text. You can also give a, a, a category. Uh, this category will be used to group uh, the different fields uh, where you will split uh, the, the regular expression parts or portions. And basically the regular expression setup is, uh, is uh, relying on field categories. The field categories are not that well known in the mobile area configuration, but that, that those were existing over the years. Uh, we have used them to easily hide uh, all the lot number fields or all the serial number fields if uh, if a certain company doesn't use lot numbers or serial numbers or unit of measures, etc. Now we have extended the field categories uh, with additional um, uh, uh, options. So now we are not just having those old uh, uh, field categories, but now we have a uh, serial number, lot number, item number, location code, quantity, expiration date. And we have also introduced some custom ones, uh, which you can use for, uh, for your custom uh, fields for the splitting. And in the regular expression setup, all you can do is that basically you can define the field category, uh, in this case, the item number, and what, what should be the re regular expression result for that, uh, for that field category. So as you can see, this has nothing to do with the actual fields on the different uh, pages, but that, then how does it look, work? So if I go back to the configuration and open up the warehouse uh, pick line, 
since I have this defined this uh, this uh, regular expression, uh, something has changed on the on the different pages. For example, if I search for the item number, as you can see, the item number automatically uh, uh, inherited the regular expression from the centrally uh, defined um, uh, uh, regular expression, also the result. And as you can see, the category is also set to inventory according to the regular expression setup. So in this case, I have the item number field and the serial number field, and both are uh, also set up with the, the, with the proper uh, field category, of course. But given that, the, the centrally managed uh, configuration can spread out the regular expressions onto different forms. And what do we expect uh, from this configuration? Well, uh, now, if you scan a, a barcode on the warehouse pick line, which is a GS1 barcode, and consists of uh, item cross-reference number and serial number, it will be automatically split and uh, the serial number information will be written into the warehouse pick and the, the, the zero result, uh, so the, 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 the original barcode, uh, GS1 barcode will be uh, sent to the, to the underlying lookup, the item lookup. So there the item cross-reference can be identified for the item itself. And this is not uh, just entered here, but all, all, all across the different uh, uh, pages where we, you have a field category item number and serial number. So if you can see uh, all of these cases, you have the, the regular expression entered. Of course, I can break this. So if, if I want to uh, edit this because I want to have a different regular expression on this particular form, I can do that. I will have a, uh, a warning that I will then use the inherited uh, regular expression setup uh, from the from the central central management. But if I, I would like to still do it, I can do it, and then uh, then uh, uh, yes, okay. <laughs> I, the, the system was one allowed to, but yeah, it will be possible to change that on the on certain pages. And once you are ready, uh, then uh, I can also try to show you uh, how does that work. So I will log out and log in because I've changed the configuration. And now our expectation uh, will be that I will be able to scan the, the warehouse pick, which I have uh, also uh, prepared in the system. Yeah. So this, this is going to, the, to, to be the, the pick itself, what uh, we'll try to process here. So I go to warehouse picks, I open it up. So I will scan this one here. Uh, the item number will automatically be uh, validated and, uh, and also the, uh, if I scan the BIN code as well, the A1 BIN code confirmed that. Then you can see that the serial number information ha has also be has al al already been uh, inserted. So the staging can already finish because we have validated not just the item number but the serial number as well with that with that uh, one single uh, reading of a composite barcode. So that is uh, what what the the regular expressions and the central management of uh, of uh, regular expression can be very useful. Okay, uh, self-diagnostics, uh, I'm looking at the clock. Okay, we have something like five minutes uh, left from the original schedule. Uh, I just uh, show you the, the result uh, because I have prepared a, a database here uh, where I have prepared a couple of uh, extra items. I call the company to many items because I have 10 thousand items there together with 10,000 uh, item cross references. And if I open up the users uh, and go to process, uh, sorry, reports offline diagnostics, uh, here you can press the new and in that case, uh, a new session, a new run uh, will be executed from the offline diagnostics. Uh, because of the, the short time, I don't want to re-execute that. I just open up one result here uh, and uh, this is how the result look like. So basically it uh, tells you who was the user, when it has been created, what is the severity. In this case, uh, it's critical. Uh, you will see the sum uh, page record count, so how many uh, records uh, were there on the pages total. 
uh, in total uh, what was the download time the total download time of the offline data um, um, how many how many by uh, client uh, record has been downloaded what was the first login and the, and the second login uh, uh, duration etc and from the list below uh, if i try to close the summary uh, you can see the individual uh, uh, pages uh, and uh, as you can see we are using color coding here so and there is a severity uh, severity uh, column um, in this case uh, the, the M and item uh, became uh, critical because the table record count was 10,000 and also the page record count is 10,000. Uh, but the download changes is still wall page, so we don't have record level synchronization here. Um, and as you can see, we have some symptoms and suggestions here. Uh, which you can uh, take, like in this case, uh, you can uh, try to decrease the record count on the item page or configure record level synchronization and same for the uh, client downloading too many records just uh, try to decrease the the the, the record count and uh, basically you can order to the different fields like uh, in this case uh, i can order to the severity and then i can see that uh, the m and item and m and item unit of measure is the the two critical pages in this configuration i can uh, try to uh, to uh, order by download time so how how uh, how long that does the different uh, page download took uh, how long the the check for changes time for the different uh, pages uh, etc so basically this this uh, nice new feature can be used for uh, analyzing the the offline configuration of your system um, so similarly to the uh, diagnostics tool the diagnostics tool basically created a, a trace file which you can either read or not but this uh, new offline diagnostic feature is is a much more uh, user readable and uh, i hope you will uh, enjoy it um yeah as promised uh, importing and exporting partial configuration is now available there are certain limitations though uh, the general setup settings, the profile settings and the category settings uh, are not included in the partial configuration, but you can take a couple of uh, fields uh, out of the out of the um, um, selection and uh, you can basically uh, uh, go there and uh, try to to export it like that. So configuration handling export partial configuration and in that case we'll have a, a list where you can uh, uh, select a couple of ones and if you press close then uh, it will it will uh, start to export those and the smaller improvements under construction as promised you can uh, enable that in the general setup and if that's enabled then uh, certain things uh, are not uh, done uh, right uh, when you are changing the configuration for example the profiles are not uh, reconstructed all of the time um, so when you are defining uh, lookup relations or real down relations then uh, then you can simply uh, enable this under construction field and once you are you, have, you are ready with the with the relations then you can uh, uh, remove the flag and then the profile can be rebuilt the configure, configurable list display limit uh, is now available. Um, sorry, if you open up a, um, a page in the general section, you will find a new option called list display limit. Uh, the default is still 1000, but you can basically uh, overwrite it uh, either less or higher but we don't do not really recommend to increase the, the 1000 uh, display limit uh, that much uh, because it can uh, uh, provide performance uh, issues uh, the status monitoring timeout uh, in certain cases it turned out that uh, that the five second timeout for the web service call is not enough that's a very simple uh, heartbeat uh, web service call for mobile and AV. But in certain uh, systems, we have seen that it's not enough. Um, now it's configurable, and uh, and you can uh, try to increase it if uh, if uh, your system is that slow. And last but not least, uh, now we have introduced the the 
the cacheable files uh, pre-downloading um, that was also driven by a partner request there he didn't want it to download the, the cacheable images on demand when the user is opening up the list uh, with those uh, 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 cacheable images but he wanted to download all of them and uh, just uh, use a system like that so that's also available and um, yeah i finally finished with the uh, features so i'm i'm uh, ready for the uh, for the questions if you have uh, you can reach us at contact at multisoft.agu. Here you can see our uh, phone number, our website. You can mail us if you, if you. There is our physical address as well. You can come and visit us if you can. Uh, hopefully we can meet someday uh, in person as well, not just virtually. So that's it. Please feel free to reach, to up, reach out to us and uh, yeah, have a nice rest of the day. Oh, I hope it's sunny. Bye-bye.